kart. Indeed. All right, time for exciting date night at Costco. Uh, which, despite living here for a year and a half, I still don't really know how to get to. So, uh, I go straight. Straight. Yeah. Uh, but on our way, we are going to debunk the five biggest lies about electric vehicles. And hopefully that might convince some people who were on the fence that now is actually person, What is that person doing? Oh, that works. was interesting. Uh, he thought it was one way. Maybe? Yeah. Well, there is like it's a double a yellow. big yellow line, but okay. Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, so maybe that'll help convince some people that uh, now is the time to go electric. Woogie, woogie, woogie. Maybe the car in front of us would benefit from having autopilot <coughs> to drive for them because they clearly don't know how to. <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Lord, Jake. Great. Number, Number one. one. <laughs> Short range. Short range. So when EVs first came out, uh, a lot of them like the, uh, the, the initial Leaf, the Bolt, the Mini, uh, I the three. I I guess I drive never really electric car. Huh? Uh, sort of hybrid. Uh, I think you can get it fully. I don't know. Okay. Um, but all of those, um, as sort of the initial prototypes, and in, when they were like testing out the waters of what people would actually live with electric wise, um, those had pretty short range, like in the double digits. But pretty much everything that's out there now is going to give you anywhere from about 200 um, all the way up to, well, I guess in the case of like Lucid, 500, um, but generally like in the 250 to 300 probably range. So at the top of that, you've got um, some of the longer range Teslas. Um, in the middle there, you've got like the um, Mustang Mach-E, uh, the, all of the cars on the Hyundai Genesis Kia platform. Uh, and so it's really not a big deal anymore that is more than enough range to get around on a daily basis. Most people drive, was it less than 50 miles a day? Um, and um, for longer road trips, you're gonna be stopping anyway. It's not like you really wanna go a 500 mile stretch um, at a time without stopping for bodily functions anyway. So I think pretty much everything out there right now is gonna be more than enough range wise. Number two. Number two. Electricity is expensive. So, ours is not. <laughs> so that's simple. Um, electricity really is not very expensive. So, uh, you know, the most that you're going to be paying is if you're doing like a uh, rush hour, uh, peak rate supercharging trip um, when like the stations are full and they're trying to get you out of there and moving. Um, so at, at that point, I think it is like 47 cents a kilowatt hour, um, depending on where you are, maybe in California or something that's more expensive. Um, Electrify America is, I think it's 41 cents a kilowatt hour. Whatever, you're all gonna let me know the, like if I'm off by a nine tenths of a cent or something anyway. So uh, let me know what I get it wrong. But um, And then they also have the option, I think that reduces it to 35 cents a kilowatt hour if you pay the $4 uh, monthly subscription price. Well, let's just put it this way. I would much rather pay $20 to fill this car with electricity than pay $90 to fill our gas guzzler. Yeah, well, I mean, at home, it's even way less. What's ours? Ours is, I think it's 17 cents a kilowatt hour. I have no idea, but all I know is that charging this car does not make me notice it on the bill. Yeah, it's, it's utterly unnoticeable, it's especially in the summer when the air conditioning is running anyway. Um, it's, it's little enough that even though we really want to do solar, it just doesn't make any economic sense for us right now. Um, so the only reason for us to do it would be, uh, I guess, to sort of be less reliant on the grid and uh, to help greenify uh, our house anyway. And we'll uh, have to spend 20 grand on an all-house generator anyway. Yeah, yeah, sure. If, and I'm definitely not doing a dyno juice generator. It's just with how loud our neighbors' ones are every time we lose power. So anyway, not even noticeable, uh, but um, you're barely paying anything for it. I mean, we saw some ridiculous Twitter thread, but uh, of someone who was claiming that their friend got an EV and their first month they paid ten thousand dollars in electricity, which is utterly ridiculous. If you left your, um, I don't think like you could even spend that much money powering your house, let alone a, a car. What are they like? What kind of McMansion do they own? Like, are they? feeding electricity into the staple center? 
Um, yes. That, Where's the Staples Center? In LA? No, you, you mean Crypto.com Arena. Seriously? Number three. Um, batteries don't last. Ba oh yeah, so uh, I think that's probably like the number one uh, fake news uh, thing about EVs is that you're gonna have all these problems with the batteries that they catch on fire all the time, that they uh, degrade uh, by crazy amounts. Why is our car stink? joking. And they only last for uh, a couple of years. Um, the warranty on them is 10 years. It's the trend, the arrow's And, um, oh, everyone's having a hard time today. Oof. Something's baking people's brains. Text, text, text. Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, Tesla was even talking about in their uh, um, shareholder meeting where they have started a recycling program for batteries, but, like, it makes no sense for them to run because they're getting so few batteries that are coming in and, like, needing recycling. Um, and so, like, th these things are just lasting, you know, hundreds of thousands of miles. And, um, you know, it's, it's super rare that anyone's even having to replace anyway, but they're, like, super cheap to uh, get replaced. So, um, I really don't think that's a big deal. And... Uh, I, I don't think 99% of people are ever going to notice that with how long they keep their cars and how many miles they put on it. So you really don't need to worry about that at all. Number four. Maintenance is expensive. So, complete lie, there is essentially zero maintenance on an electric vehicle. Our old Model 3 that we had for three years, we put exactly zero dollars into maintenance of it. Uh, you don't have to do oil changes because there's no engine and transmission. Uh, I don't know how that works in a car. I don't think you're oiling the transmission. Yeah, whatever. Uh, and transmission oil. Transmit, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know not, how often they replace that. Yeah. Well, they see me walking in and they tell you you gotta do it. Um, <laughs> they try to sell me that on this car. Um, so, uh, um, but you really don't have to do it at all um, in, uh, in an EV. Uh, I guess like the only- Tires. Things, yeah, you would really need to do is like rotating tires and replacing them. And brakes. Um, brakes potentially. But honestly, with uh, regenerative braking, you're not using the uh, friction brakes all that much anyway. And so um, they actually last much longer. So even after three years, we didn't have any, any sign of uh, that potentially being a problem. So way cheaper to maintain in the long run. And so think um, of all the time you're saving not going for oil changes either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a great point. Like that, that time has a value. Uh, uh, itself too and so like even in addition to how much you're saving on gas you're also saving on that maintenance and not having to stretch yourself out and go sit inside of a dirty dingy car dealership uh with coffee from and listen to joe's opinions on the state of the world oi oi uh was number five <laughs> there are no chargers no oh yeah um in here turn right yeah a lot of people uh, also ask me about like what do we do for charging can you ever find chargers aren't they always broken aren't there like none of them anywhere um, and that is completely not true either um, they are uh, super widely available um, from level two chargers which are like the you know charge point ones that uh, you would find like for example in front of our municipal center or at the library or at the zoo here um, those ones are uh, you know out and about um, although I do wish that there were more of them and it feels like they're not building them out as much as they should, but um, you can generally find them and they're super cheap. And uh, then for like supercharging, which you really only need when you're doing road trips anyway, uh, those are along all of the major, um, you know, highway corridors. They're in like all the major areas around here. Um, there are uh, plenty of them. And even if you're not in a Tesla, the, you know, Electrify America, Charge Point, like whatever local ones, um, you know, are generally generally around as well. So while I do think that this is going to become a bigger and bigger problem with there not being enough of them um, and not getting built out fast enough for how many more EVs are on the road um, and not being maintained enough, the current state right now is that it's really not a problem and uh, not something that you're going to have to worry about very often. So uh, not a problem at all. And we're here. And we're here at Costco. So <laughs> Yay! Let's go buy some solar salts. So and with that, water bottles for the kids. Awesome. With that, thank you so much for watching. Hope you found that useful. Please don't be afraid to whack that like button, kick that subscribe button, and ring-a-ling-a-ding that alert bell. When I'm, did I'm, you turn into like Danny Tanner? I'm, I'm workshopping some stuff here. It's bad. I mean, I mean, I'm in the comments below if, if, if this works good. for you. Not good. Yeah, just, or, just, or not. just hit like. Just if you like it, just hit the like button. Catch you the next one.